All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about five knives that are better than the Benchmade 535 Bugout. Now, don't get me wrong, the Bugout is certainly a cool knife. Obviously, I have one in my hand right now, so I do own one. I have owned several over the years. I personally think that the uh, limited edition or special edition versions usually are a little bit better with the uh, JG10 20 CV blade. And honestly, these uh, bug outs do have a time and a purpose, but I think that a lot of people go to the bug out nowadays in the EDC community as one of the kind of like pillars to the community or to the knife world as a whole. And I think that there are actually quite a few other knives that are out there that are actually quite a bit better or certainly fill the role of this knife. I think for most people better. So to be fair, first we're gonna start off with the Benchmades. And the first one for me, and it's a little bit hard because the bug out has so many different iterations of blade steels, handle materials, and all of that fun stuff. But for me, I think the first one that's really a legitimate contender, albeit slightly smaller than the bug out proper, is the mini grip. Now this is a 556. There is also the 555, which has the kind of spidey hole opening hole on it but the 556 is probably one of my just all-time go-to knives for doing many different things whether it's outdoor related or EDC related uh, this guy is really really there and I think honestly even though this is a predecessor to the bug out I think that this is a better knife if you if I had to choose I would certainly say this in S30V or the bug out in S30V, this is definitely the one I would go for nine times out of 10. About the only disadvantage of this knife is the fact that it is a little bit heavier, but at the same time too, the weight really is inconsequential because it's not even an ounce more. It's more, I think about like a half ounce heavier. So it's not that much crazier to carry. Okay, the next one up and kind of redundant is going to be the full-sized griptilian now this one is a five now this one is a 550 so there's the 551 that looks just like the bigger version of the 56 but the 550 which is this guy with the spidey opening hole essentially is another full-size griptilian and this one might seem a little bit off key to talk about because you'd think that the full-size griptilian is going to be bigger than the bug out and it is true it is bigger and it is true it is bigger but not actually by as much as you would expect it is a little bit bigger but probably only about a quarter inch bigger in overall size at least when closed that being said you still get a very nice very long blade that will do a ton of work not to mention the full-size bug out or the full -size, the full-sized griptilian is very comfortable you can get easily a four finger grip on this guy and really lock into those uh jimpings on the back so this guy is really incredible incredibly usable and a just really solid knife. Now mine has the combo edge on it, but of course you can get them plain edged, non serrated, but the Griptilian, the full size Griptilian, either the 550 or the 551 are really solid offerings as well. And once again, very comparable to the and to make matters even worse for the bug out, honestly, the full size grip really isn't that much heavier because the full size grip has a lot of plastic and it does not have very large um, metal liners, which is kind of a disadvantage to this knife as a whole, but it has still been very tanky for me. And once again, um, neither really does the bug out. The bug out really doesn't have any metal in it, much at all, aside from the blade, of course. Okay, so the next one that's gonna be quite a bit different and honestly not too much heavier. I was kind of surprised because this is a Alox model of a Victorinox, but the Farmer is actually, in my opinion, a really good um, alternative to the bug out. Now, of course, this blade does not lock and it is not quite as long, but what you lose in overall blade features and overall blade steel length, all that kind of stuff, you more than make up for in alternative tools. And so if you're really looking for something that a little bit more outdoor oriented because the bug out before it became so synonymous with the EDC community it was really designed and marketed for you know ultralight backpacker backpackers and being out in the wilderness that's what it was originally designed for and why it was called the bug out in the first place so if you are looking for something that is more outdoor oriented or pushing towards that side I think the farmer is a really valuable contender to look to for being an alternative not to mention too you can also throw it in something like this nice little leather pocket slip and it is 
nice, convenient, and easy to carry in a pocket. Okay, if that's not your style and you're totally uninterested in um, multi-tools, the next ones up are going to be the Spyderco Para 3 and Paramilitary 2. So this is the Para 3, and the Para 3 is more closely related in size to the bug out. The bug out is actually just a little bit bigger um, in overall size than the Para 3, but at the same time too, I think the Para 3 is a little bit more usable because you can easily choke up on it and get right on that cutting edge. So the cutting edge is smaller, but it's far more controllable and that compression lock is super robust and so even though the tip is pretty thin and you definitely don't want to pry on this blade or on this tip you do have a really solid lock and I did hard use my paramilitary 2 my OG paramilitary 2 quite frequently and it held up just fine. In addition to, this one does come in a lot of the same steels, and I mean, honestly, para 3s, paramilitary 2s come in just about every steel under the sun with a million different options, so that's kind of why I wanted to throw it on this list, because the bug out comes in so many flavors, and so does the paramilitary 2 and para 3. Okay, so this is the paramilitary 2. Of course, I already mentioned it as being one of the options as well. And I think that this knife, if you're looking for something a little bit bigger, you know, you want to go more towards that full-sized griptilian, uh, this is going to be where it's at. Now, once again, the paramilitary 2 is noticeably bigger in all aspects, but it's honestly not too crazy of a knife. It really, it seems like a larger knife, and don't get me wrong, it is a definitely full-sized blade, but it does carry its weight really well. It carries its size really well. And once again, comes in a whole host of different steels. This one's in the CPM Rex 45, but uh, you can find it in different other scale, or you can find it in different other blade options and of course other scale options. And to kind of comment on that, the different scale options will have an effect or impact on weight. Of course, if you choose a full titanium bug out, it's not going to be as lightweight as a G10 bug out. If you choose a full carbon fiber paramilitary 2, it will be noticeably lighter than something like a G10 or alternatively a titanium handled paramilitary too. So once again, you know, depending on what you want, if you do really want that weight savings, you're going to want to opt for lighter weight handle scales and see the weight reductions there in both, honestly, the bug out or in something like a para, para three paramilitary two. And with things like carbon fiber scales, you can definitely get a para three within the range of weight of a bug out. So those are some competitive options that I think are not as often talked about. I mean, a lot of people do love the Para 3 Paramilitary 2, but they are, in my opinion, superior knives to the Bug Out. And for me, I do really like the Bug Out for being kind of an athletic knife. The biggest thing that I do see as a draw for the Bug Out, at least in its kind of, in its kind of uh, unmodified state is how slim it is because the slimness while it is not the most fun to hold and to use in one hand or you know like to use while holding it uh, it is super super thin so if you want to throw it in like some sweatpants or shorts while you're working out this is one of my knives that I really do like I go running with it um, I work out with it rock climb do all those kinds of things because it's such a lightweight and such a thin knife that's very unobtrusive for me to carry so that's the biggest uh, reasons or pros to the bug out itself. But if you are looking for like a decent EDC knife, I would definitely recommend considering, especially the Benchmade Griptilians. They are really kind of, they've kind of fallen by the wayside, but I think that they are really cool knives. And uh, it's kind of a shame that Benchmade is kind of trying to work them out of the, the kind of system, but uh, definitely worth checking out the 550, the 551, the 556, the 555, uh, all the grips are pretty good. I don't really like the Tanto 553. It looks a little bit awkward, but it is still a venerable knife as well. Anyways, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed that. Seeing some competitive options to the Benchmade bug out. It's been a little bit hard to uh, categorize it because there's so many different flavors to it. And of course, all of those different flavors, sizes, and uh, options definitely impact the price. So I tried to find comparable listings in these guys. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.